Many years ago, a young man gave up all he possessed in a search for truth that finally led him to the Book of Mormon. His name was Parley P. Pratt. In the spring of 1830, I was married and settled in a small home in the midst of a clearing made with my own hands near the Black River in Ohio. It was a beautiful, quiet place with a garden, thriving orchard, and fields of grain. About this time, my brother William, whom I had not seen for years, came to visit. My little brother, I am impressed. When we were together last, you had nothing. And now look at this. It would be difficult to leave it all. Leave it? Why? Past several months, the Holy Spirit has wrought so powerfully on me, I can't rest. The scriptures, William, the prophecies, you've read them. Important things are coming. I feel I have to devote my time to enlightening my fellow man and in warning them to prepare for the coming of the Lord. As a minister? No, I don't have any authority. I doubt anyone has. See, that's the great missing link, William, the authority to minister in holy things. But I feel duty-bound to enlighten mankind so far as God has enlightened me. If I had 50 acres of land, comfortable house, fields of grain, beautiful garden, fine orchard, I'm sure I would stay and enjoy it while I lived. The world might go on its merry way for all I care. You've toiled for years to obtain this. Why not enjoy it? Whoever shall forsake houses and lands for my sake shall receive an hundredfold and life everlasting. Are those the words of Jesus Christ? I believe the Bible partly. I wouldn't dare believe it literally. I feel called upon by the Holy Ghost to forsake my house and home for the gospel's sake. I plan to rely on the Lord's promises. If you think they are false. If I'm sustained, they are true. Godspeed, brother. We parted. He to his business. I to my preparations for a mission which would only end with my life. In August 1830, I sold my farm, completed my arrangements, and we bid adieu to our wilderness home, never to see it afterwards. I thought you'd gone to bed. I had. And then I discovered I was missing a husband. I need to leave the boat and stop a while in this region. Why? I don't know. But the spirit has plainly manifest that much to me. Go to our friends in Albany. And I'll come soon. How soon? I'm not sure. I have something to do here in this region. Exactly what or how long it will take me, I just don't know. But I'll come when it's finished. I took leave of her and of the boat and early the next morning walked ten miles into the country. Good day, sir. Well, good morning to you, stranger. I stopped to breakfast with a Mr. Wells and proposed to preach in the evening. He kindly accompanied me through the neighborhood to visit the people and circulate the appointment. A Baptist deacon, name of Hanlon. He's a good soul. Mm -hmm. 
Sit, sit, Isaac. How are you, Thomas? Fine. Isaac, this is Mr. Pratt from Ohio. He's on his way to Albany. Albany? You're a bit off the beaten path, aren't you, boy? Mr. Pratt is a preacher of sorts. In fact, he will be preaching at my home this evening. You'll join us, won't you? Do you preach the scriptures, young man? I do. Good. I'll be there. Seven o'clock. We'll be looking for you. Mr. Pratt, are your views of the scriptures broad enough to accept such things as visions and the ministering of angels? They are. Come, sit. What is it, Isaac? Last week, I came across a book, a strange book, published down in Palmyra, said to have been originally written on plates of brass or gold by a branch of the tribes of Israel, and discovered and translated by a young man by the aid of heaven. There's even been talk of the ministry of angels. This book, do you have one? Loaned it to my sister. She'll be returning it in the morning, though, if you care to stop by. I will, if it's agreeable. I felt a strange interest in that book. The next morning, I called at his house where for the first time my eyes beheld the Book of Mormon. That book of books. The door's open. 